Hello, my name is Gareth Young and I'm presenting our work, a case study on student experiences in social VR in a remote STEM classroom. As XR becomes more affordable for everyone, its natural affordances also present much interest for in the wild research. As a product of the COVID-19 pandemic, there is also a growing interest in its potential for remote educational practices. Based on real-world experiences, in this work, we present a case study on a social VR intervention to inspire new HCI research and reflect on the issues arising from our practice-based research approach. Our motivations were to report, analyze, and summarize our everyday challenges, identify design considerations for new ed tech, and comment on social VR's utility in delivering STEM subjects in a remote setting. We started off on this journey with a large and open question. What will higher education look like in the future? It's a pretty simple question, but it challenges us to reimagine and apply creative thinking to the future of digital classroom experiences. We believe that XR could enhance the quality of communication amongst our remote classrooms, influence knowledge transfer, and support unique situations such as those during the pandemic. This case study explored the effects of using a cross-platform social VR application called Altspace VR. For this, an MSc module at TCD was used to examine the application of course content inspired by the concept of a virtual field trip. We delivered the necessary materials for co-constructive world building via remote lectures, structured tutorial sessions, and Altspace VR itself. The main guiding question for this practical exercise was, what are students' perceptions of using social VR as a teaching intervention during lectures in a remote learning higher education context? In completing this study, we hope to gather information on specific remote teaching and learning issues. The first problem we hoped to uncover was the perceived usability and the hedonic and pragmatic experiences of traditional VLEs versus social VR. Second, we wanted to lift the lid on XR learning tasks and remote classroom encounters with technology that invariably embellish the students' experiences. Finally, we wanted to look at the combined effects of all these problems and how they impact student perspectives on the future design and use of social VRs and VLEs. Students were already familiar with using Blackboard from previous years, and the online courses delivered remotely alongside our own. Many also had different experiences using Teams and Zoom for video lectures and collaborative projects. So Blackboard was our baseline VLE that our students were already familiar with. In addition to this, the students were asked to use Altspace VR. As the students were unfamiliar with this platform, we devised a series of tutorials that helped them design and create personal virtual environments. The course lectures were all delivered online, and the Altspace VR platform was used as a supportive environment for online collaboration and completing the tutorial tasks. The world building process followed a previously validated workflow. It involved ground truthing, where students visited a specific object or place with their smartphone, photogrammetry, using software to build a 3D model of the location, model cleaning and preparation with Blender, a 3D editing software, constructing a virtual environment using the Unity game engine, and a virtual field trip with other students, colleagues, and friends. Class comprised of 46 students, with 24 providing anonymous feedback on using these technologies via an online questionnaire. This questionnaire includes the UMUX Lite and the UEQ, as well as text boxes for more qualitative feedback, and took on average about 13 minutes to complete. The average age of the group was 24, with a gender balance of 14 male to 10 female respondents. The students considered their ability to use digital technology as very good. They also described themselves as being familiar with VLE systems, with slightly above average practical expertise in using them in education. On the UMUX light scale, the students considered both platforms usable. We then converted this score to raw sus to compare their usability to other technologies, and they were both found to be slightly lacking. When we asked the students why they rated each platform as such, they provided further qualitative feedback for context. For example, on Blackboard, they described UI issues and a lack of personal involvement. On Altspace VR, they highlighted issues with the delivery of technical content and a lack of developer-friendly UIs. When we look at the UEQ results, we can see a considerable difference in user experiences between Blackboard and Altspace VR. While we saw no differences in pragmatic scales for efficiency, perspicuity, and dependability, Statistically significant differences were seen for our attractiveness and the hedonic qualities of stimulation and novelty. The analysis of the open-ended question took a thematic approach guided with the frequency and importance of these issues raised by the students. Remember, many students were already familiar with Blackboard, but few had actually used Altspace VR previously. The students reaffirmed their displeasure with the UIs and provided some interesting feedback on the issues they currently face. The problems they highlighted revolved around issues of embodiment and presence 
While Allspace VR lacked the technical interface, the students enjoyed interacting with each other on the virtual field trips. The problems they faced with bandwidth requirements and connectivity issues were also noted. When identifying future requirements, the students discussed creating an engaging and friendly platform that was streamlined between virtual environments and the physical world. They also highlighted that accessibility and user experience must be significantly improved. In identifying new problem spaces, we found that non-task related quality items added and detracted from student experiences. For the traditional VLE, accessing the materials was easy but held no sense of embodiment within the virtual classroom. The social VR platform, on the other hand, provided real-time embodied interactions, but still it offered no developer-friendly or familiar command line interface. We also learned that the social VR platform's attractiveness was rated higher, and the hedonic qualities of stimulation and novelty also scored much higher for social VR, so more work is required to investigate these findings further. Finally, we learned that the overall experience of remote learning was highlighted as lacking and more stimulating communicative and social elements are needed for future VLEs. Addressing these findings requires careful pedagogical and instructional design from the HCI community and teachers alike. Thank you. Please read the paper for further details. Mm -hmm.